on your LinkedIn page or on your Facebook page or in a whole lot of other bits and pieces because you've achieved something, you've earned something. Well, that's not really that revolutionary. If you clicked on it though, and you were an employer, say, I could see what the outcomes were that you actually achieved. I might actually be able to see the evidence, the actual things that you made, the web page that you designed and all these kind of things. And I could also get a whole lot more information out of that open badge. So it's not really a badge. It's actually a badge with a whole lot of metadata and a whole lot of information <coughs> stored alongside it. And that's what open badges really, that's what open badges really are. <coughs> now if you think of open badges and our sort of lifelong learning sort of qualifications landscape, uh, and you think about it at that really formal end of things that I'm involved in at the HQA, the smallest units we have are like 20 hours of learning. The smallest bits of recognition you can get in Scotland on the SCQF, the Scottish Credit Qualifications Framework, are 10 hours of learning. But actually, learning doesn't work that way. Learning actually is smaller chunks. I mean, even if you think about how the experience you're having just now, or the kind of average learning that somebody in the workplace might do, might be, they might go along to a day-long course. That's too small at the moment to get recognised either in the SCQF or by a qualification. <coughs> now, what I want you to think about is actually a lot of thought goes into making the outcomes and the competencies and these things that actually exist in all these unit descriptors and stuff. Each of these could be a badge. You could actually disaggregate learning even further. You could be doing things, and I'm talking about at the formal end, you could take formal qualifications and, and, and break them into wee badges. And actually, again in Scotland, with this wonderful system called accreditation of prior learning, so somebody comes along with three or four badges, I say, you've actually got a qualification. So you can link also, link the, link the informal kind of learning to more formal kind of stuff. Other things you can do is, is like breadcrumb learning. I, I used to work at a further education college. Yep. One minute. I used to work at a further education college. The, the standard challenge I had was I had adults doing communications and I would say to them when they came in, one of the things you're going to do at the end of this course is you're going to do a 10 minute presentation. And at that point they all came down to the desk. <laughs> don't speak, we don't want to speak in front of you. <laughs> but I could break come learning, I could give a badge if they did two minutes, they did five minutes, they did. So there's a whole lot of things that you can do with open badges. And one last bit is in some areas they're particularly well built out. <coughs> if you have a look for particularly things around web design, coding, and JavaScript, and a whole lot of areas like that, there are some web badges that exist already that we can import directly in to Scottish education. I can't really say any more just now. Doug Bell shows actually in the room, and, and, and I'm anticipating there'll be an announcement from SGA and Mozilla probably in the next, within the next week, I, I, I hope, uh, that tells everybody that badges are cool, open badges are really good. Go and have a look at it for your learners. Thank you. Thank you.